immediately uh, go through uh, the first question I will ask to you all. Uh, the second one will be uh, for Mr. Bittel about Poland and the situation in Poland. And then uh, we will have a last uh, question and we will uh, finish uh, with a, a quick uh, conclusion. So um, you said uh, some aspects of your vision of the project, but uh, for you, what are the main benefits of Rail Baltica for the region? As such, what makes it unique and why should the European citizens care about it? What motivates also you personally uh, to make it happen? Uh, it's a long question for two minutes answer. <laughs> Who wants to begin? Okay, Mr. Ogilis. Um, <coughs> yeah. Yes, uh, thank you. I think that uh, the expected economical impact for the Baltic countries will be quite a valuable one, in my view, and not just for the Baltic countries, for, for the whole of the region. I had the opportunity of seeing this project earlier, before this conference, so that I am also, I'm also able to confirm. And in the course of the day, you all will have the, an opportunity to get acquainted with it. Of course, business is becoming more and more global. In her talk, Mrs. Rubesa mentioned Silk Road. Of course, the, this new Silk Road project brings about a lot of adjustments in the global logistics and uh, transit and distribution. F for this project, surely, and it for this project surely means another large opportunity of attracting investment and uh, becoming part of it and uh, creating a multimodal transport network. At the construction stage, it will also translate as an increase of uh, national GDPs, it means new jobs, which also benefits um, uh, uh, and develops economy. Yes, of course, um, also foreign investment I mentioned before. Once the project is um, implemented, um, I a link between the Scandinavian countries and Western European countries um, is in fact uh, possible, as this is not yes, possible at present. For now, the greatest opportunities for tourism and people and, um, and businesses are provided by our national air carrier, and that, uh, of course, I'm keen on mentioning. But in general, general uh, workforce mobility, business opportunities and um, cargo logistics um, that is different and, in my view, will enable the project not only to be um, uh, viable and sustainable, but also uh, contribute to a larger and much larger European um, uh, region. I dare to say uh, it is a huge benefit for the whole Europe because such opportunities that are created by the Real Baltica project, we do not have them for now. If we mention personal motivation, um, first it is a factor as we are going to boost employment in Latvia, which is a um, very important aspect. Secondly, any new transport infrastructure and its development will benefit citizens and in the Baltics. First, they will be able to reach the shared Baltic space uh, better and also uh, more remote spaces I referred to. Here, beside the Baltic countries, we need emphasis from uh, the colleagues in Finland uh, and Poland so that the project be indeed economically viable and um, cost efficient so that I hope that our cooperation not just between our three countries but already involving five countries uh, who knows perhaps someone else joins in the future means that the project will be a success Already at this stage, I'm quite confident and perhaps see more in it when I saw uh, that and saw 10 years ago. For now, we really have put a lot of work in it to make it attractive and above all cost effective. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Masulis. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ogulis mentioned probably all, all, all <laughs> of those uh, opportunities which will, will, will come. To, to us, uh, as I said in my introductory speech, uh, probably there are things which we can't see yet. And uh, I'm sure that uh, there will be other opportunities which we don't foresee now. 
But first of all, uh, building this line will open a new route for us. Yeah. A new route. Uh, currently, we are operating only to east to west direction. It will open us uh, southwest uh, direction, and uh, new potential uh, cargo flows uh, will come to, to our region. I'm sure of this. Our railway company has already con uh, concluded a contract with Polish, one of the Polish largest logistics uh, companies, already to start promoting this route to see what potential is already existent, uh, to, to, to look at the opportunities. Uh, I, out of those things which were mentioned, I would uh, emphasize employment. It will create a number of jobs for us. It will add uh, a certain percentage to our GDP. Uh, as it was uh, presented uh, to us up front, uh, this study probably will be presented uh, here today. Uh, <clears throat> it brings a positive effect, ultimately, with all investments uh, made. It brings a positive economical effect. So if it brings positive economical effect, how you can doubt, uh, how you can doubt a project? So. I don't know. Maybe I'll, I'll stop here. Okay. Almost everything was mentioned by my colleague, Mr. Willis. Thank you. Thank you very much. Perhaps uh, you want to continue, Mr. Bitian? Thank you very much. I already mentioned that we view the project Rail Baltic as an effective answer to the marginalization of uh, rail transport which is caused by different historical factors as well as the easy availability of uh, road transport. This is one of the aspects. A very important aspect is also an environmental one because we would like to take care of our nature in the fragile zones of uh, northeastern Europe, in uh, Poland. And uh, by shifting the cargo transport from road to railway would all, could help this. And this is a challenge to all of us, and it connects us, and the challenge to create, um, to give railway its priority. We know that all the actions connected with Rio Baltico have to be long term, they have to be based on cost and benefits analysis so that we have, can have also an economic basis not only for the realization of the project uh, but also for the maintaining of the project in the future. It is very important that the project uh, be um, sustainable. This is why we are very interested and curious about the analysis that we are going to hear in the later part of the conference, and we would like them to meet our expectations uh, for us as a country which is also on the route of the on the on the route of the Real Baltic project. Personally, I am driven by the will to look for the cohesive transport um, net, well, network uh, with the key role of uh, railway. We have to remember that uh, Poland is implementing the railway pro national railway project uh, of the value of 66.5 billion zlotys. Uh, this project is realized uh, also thanks to the EU funds, and it's going to raise the importance of uh, railway in Poland and also create the situation that it will change the situation in Poland so that uh, passengers will come back to railway, to rail and uh, shift from cars, and, it is all, and all, also the cargo will be transported by railway. And this is the motivation that is uh, the driven factor to all of us uh, that are a part of Ray Baltica project. And since the project connects uh, numerous countries, uh, it can be an effective tool to implement um, our common transport policies. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's difficult to add anything, but um, if I try, uh, uh, from Estonian perspective, uh, for our entrepreneurs, well, Rail Baltic um, brings um, important European big markets closer, at least time-wise. So um, it is um, 
it should be easier in the future to deliver your cargo into the center, central Europe. And another thing that I will add is uh, that for us, um, a very important part of Rail Baltic is a um, terminal which will be built in MUGA, multimodal terminal, that um, somehow connects different uh, railways uh, and also um, connects us with our Nordic partner and Nordic neighbor Finland through um, uh, ports. So this is the project that, um, that um, makes Tallinn not the final destination, but um, a, um, a um, place where different um, transit cargos can change the railway weight. Thank you. Thank you very much um, to all of you. I think your personal engagement is very strong, very important, because it's also a question of, uh, of personal um, conviction and capacity and competence. And I thank you all for that, because it's uh, a pleasure for me uh, to uh, build trust with uh, such partners. Mr. Bittel, I want to especially address you, because Poland uh, has uh, already started intensive works to upgrade the Rail Baltica line on its territory, and you will inaugurate the first section from Warsaw to Sadovnie this summer. How do you see the project going forward? Do you think that works can be done in the same period as with your neighborhood, and especially in Lithuania, because uh, we try to connect you uh, together? Thank you very much for this question. It is true that uh, the works at the stretch Warsaw Sadovna should finish this summer. And it can be said that after long and uh, grow some uh, preparatory works connected with designing and acquiring land and getting environmental permits, uh, which are very important and which are in compliance uh, with uh, EU directives, we are reaching the point in which uh, Warsaw Sadovna stretch is going to happen soon. Poland uh, generally consequently implementing our tasks um, at this uh, Rail Baltic route according to our commitments and uh, based on the environmental and economic factors, we are hoping that this uh, investment projects are going to finish uh, simultaneously in all the countries um, included in this project. We are also hoping for uh, getting uh, the EU funds in order to implement our tasks. Uh, for us, the project Rail Baltica is a very part, important part of uh, the tent uh, core corridor in North sea, Northern Sea and Adriatic Sea. In terms of our project from Warsaw to Lithuanian border, the works have, the works have been finished in 70%, which is a very uh, huge development. Uh, we also have to add that, uh, that we are implementing investments uh, the stretch of 450 kilometers from Warsaw to the border with uh, Germany, which is also possible thanks to the EU funds. These are the works and projects um, that make our this corridor change considerably. I have to emphasize that we see um, some disproportions um, between the engagement and commitment of the Polish side uh, with the benefits for the Polish economy. But here in this aspect, I'm looking forward to the cost and benefits analysis that are going to be presented in the further discussions. Thank you. Thank you very much, because of course you cross a region which is not so uh, uh, big in number of uh, inhabitants. So uh, we had many discussions about uh, the importance for your country in the public debate uh, to have this infrastructure. But it was said by you, uh, it's a European project, it's the connection to all the network, and it must give a new occasion uh, to connect with the east-west capacities and possibilities, but also uh, in uh, all directions. And of course, for me as coordinator, I insist on the uh, Rail Baltic because it's a sort of a priority, uh, one of the top six 
big projects in Europe and the only one in the East, but uh, it's also uh, at the West that I want that uh, the, the works can be done uh, until the end of, um, of the Western part of the corridor. So thank you. Since a uh, new question, since the implementation of the project, in the Baltic states, and you said you spoke uh, yourselves about the cooperation. We have uh, one joint venture. What do you think about uh, this uh, uh, possibility uh, through the uh, approval of the contracting scheme uh, to give a new input and uh, coherence to uh, the project? And how uh, do you agree that a single infrastructure management for the new built infrastructure in the Baltic states would be most efficient solution. We have a discussion about it. And of course, the uh, consideration of the other projects show that when we have one plus one plus one, it's a platform, not just a section. Uh, and we need to go, uh, to, to, go to, to this continuity of the infrastructure. So we try to find the better solution for the governance of the project. So what are your con concerns and remarks about it? Mr. Ogudis, you want to? Um, yes, thank you. I will just uh, speak carefully so that I do not disclose everything myself. Uh, yes, um, I am of that opinion, mm, and I also support mm, the fact that I the management is efficient and cost-effective. Of course, we have to see to the fact that the money uh, of taxpayers from both the Baltics and the EU is uh, spent and kept uh, optimally and uh, to the best possible benefit. Of course, the objective of the management is, is paramount. We have to prevent any potential fragmentation of the wor railway work network. We have to ensure that our offer is properly understood and attractive also to the carriers so that there is no double coordination or coordination or on the national borders so that the train drivers uh, do not need to master several languages and unnecessary redundant uh, procedures and red tape is avoided because also presently while implementing the project we face the fact that legislative rules are slightly different already between the three Baltic countries so that in my view it is important to carry out feasibility studies to find out what is the best way to maintain this infrastructure in the in the future. I think we uh, mustn't rush, but first uh, we do have to thoroughly, um, we have to study so that we do not end up with inconsistencies, inconsistencies as regard all these Thank aspects you. I just mentioned. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's a little bit early, I think, to discuss this. Of course, we all agree, and it has been agreed uh, among all of us that uh, structure has to be efficient, uh, transparent, uh, in order to have uh, the most effective management of the, of the operation. Uh, not, I, I understand correctly that we don't have too many examples here, so we will have to create something, uh, something new maybe set a standard uh, if there will be developments in other parts of Europe, uh, as it was said earlier. Uh, this might be a first example. So for us, the most important would be that the structure, uh, this management structure would be transparent, easy to understand. And uh, actually here in Baltics, we have something uh, where we can uh, learn from that's a single gas market, which was just recently created by three Baltic states, which was also coordinated with Poland, which was coordinated with Finland. And there are single entry tariffs and so on and so forth. The whole structure operates uh, perfectly um, without um, asking permissions of one and single of, of each of each country. So if a uh, gas market can be an example, we might look at something which uh, can help us to create this structure. In any way, we are open up to, to those discussions. 
and uh, developing of a uh, of a management structure. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Bitter. Do you want to to say something? No, you are not. You are observer. You are not partner for the moment. But perhaps once. <laughs> You were invited to go. <laughs> to go in. Of course, uh, um, we can say that we're friendly looking at the uh, works and activities that are happening in the Baltic region. And of course, we are going to help um, with our experience. Because as I said, we are implement implementing a huge railway project, which uh, also can provide some experience for our partners in the Baltic uh, states. Thank you, very Thank you very much. I do assume that um, the background of this question comes from the um, consideration that naturally every country wants to uh, make its own decisions. But if cooperation um, and one structure for all three countries um, makes um, decisions um, decision making uh, easier and if it makes clearer uh, how um, the costs or fees for infrastructure are decided then um, we are very open for this kind of cooperation thank you very much you said that um, it's uh, red baltica is a new route uh, the people will feel new, a new distance between cities and countries. Uh, this will be a new experience. Uh, it will be also a booster of um, evolution with ITS and digitalization. And we want together that uh, this uh, project can be um, the most efficient it can be and a model for all the uh, network. Uh, you spoke about um, security. This is uh, in two ways, if I can say. Security, uh, because in the moment on road, uh, there are many accidents, and the Commissioner Bush decided to uh, put security as a forefront uh, topic uh, for our work, and we will do it. She spoke also about simplification, and we know that uh, sometimes the administrative burden uh, because of differences, it's uh, normal, but it's a bit difficult. That's why this question of uh, uh, the, um, the possibility to have uh, this uh, efficient management, transparent and uh, efficient management is uh, on the table. But we want also to continue and to finish, if I can say, not to have an end in Tallinn or Helsinki and to connect with uh, Sweden at the end of the Button Gulf. Uh, the climate issue is very, very uh, near of the, uh, uh, of the benefits we want to obtain, uh, not only uh, the business one, but also the climate one. And um, I want to uh, insist on a point that uh, we decided at the beginning to uh, work on the business aspects, the economical mobilization of the partners, because uh, we are very numerous in this room. And um, we want to succeed in the promotion of this uh, Rail Baltica. And for this, we need promoters. Ladies and gentlemen, you could see how the ministers are promoters and personally engaged. So I ask you to be also promoters and to show with us that we can make a sustainable, economical and friendly on the environmental side uh, infrastructure. This is not just about infrastructure. This is about connecting three Baltic countries with the neighbors, Finland, Poland. It's a way to finish with this unbalanced situation between East and West. It's also new opportunities. So thank you to you all. I think for the 10 years uh, in, uh, in the future, you have uh, lot, a lot to do as ministers, but also as partners together. Thank you for your cooperation. Thank you for your contribution. You can uh, make an applaud <laughs> for the ministers. <laughs>